Hello, my name is David Treese from Ubico. I'm a senior solution architect here, and I am going to present on uh, creative and effective authentication strategies for a zero trust pandemic world. So as you all know, uh, we are in COVID. And to that point is even if you've had a zero trust type of uh, architecture that's putting in place or plans, all of a sudden, now it's the time when you really see that that is coming to fruition. We've been thrust into having everyone work from home. And if you've had some level of VPN that was limited to just a few set of people, well, now it's everybody. And if you had trust zones where those VPNs were locked down, well, unfortunately that has sort of been blown out because people have to access things that you didn't expect. So regardless of whether you've started a zero trust uh, initiative or not, you're sort of in the middle of it or you're in the, the fire fight of, the, of, of all that. So when we talk about uh, implementing zero architecture, it's, it's a lot of stuff that you have to do. You have to be able to, uh, classify the data, define your policies, mi do micro-segmentations, asset management, and yet there is no time. And that planning takes a fair amount of work. Uh, and where do you start? Do you start with identity management, endpoint management, uh, other places? And a lot of times it takes a lot of collaboration across teams that takes a fair amount of time. But right now it's, you're in the midst of it all. And what, since this is an authenticate uh, conference talking about authentication. We're going to focus on how authentication works in a zero trust architecture. And hopefully we can provide some ability that you can implement some of these capabilities while you're building out your zero trust uh, implementation, which that can take a fair amount of time. From my perspective, uh, authentication trust depends on a fair number of things. Uh, identity proofing, which is to validate who the end user is and how you do that remotely can be a challenge in these days. Uh, also, uh, device attestation, as in uh, what, what devices are actually you know, interacting with your network. Uh, is it uh, a device that you have provisioned to people or a BYOD? Uh, and it's important in a zero trust to be able to figure that out. Uh, and one of the root of all this is strong authentication. How do we ensure that we're using strong authentication that can't be um, hacked by others. And along with that line, there's user control. Is now that we're in a, a world where we can't see people, they're all remote, how do we ensure that the individual has their uh, authentication, you know, do they really control it or are they not? And then lastly, looking at authentication scope. So uh, this goes a little bit into authorization, but ensuring that that authentication is scoped for the appropriate uh, access that is needed at the time. So from what we've, we've learned a lot over the years around authentication, there's a, there are authentication mechanisms that are better than others. So early on, this is around MFA, we know that uh, OTPs can now be uh, phished, you know, passwords can be stolen. Uh, and even that combo of things that have worked in the past have, are no longer as good as they used to be. What really matters today is having not a shared type of authentication, being a shared secret that both parties have, but having a, a PKI infrastructure where you have asymmetric authentication, which you would be like a smart card or, or FIDO. And that way, the individual has one piece of the authentication mechanism, and then the, the company, the enterprise, would have the other. The other thing uh, with FIDO in particular is it adds additional phishing capabilities or anti-phishing capabilities where uh, the registration of the credential is now uh, tightly integrated to the actual uh, relying party, such that uh, a man in the middle type of attack cannot happen because the authenticator itself will not be able to, will not interact with a non-registered reliant party. And with that mechanism in mind, that does provide an additional level of security that's needed to have strong authentication. I think the other thing that's important, especially on a zero trust perspective, is that uh, FIDO sort of flips the paradigm on authentication. In uh, previous models, either 
the enterprise has a shared responsibility or the primary responsibility of storing the credential itself. Uh, where FIDO is that the private key is now held within the device itself, the authenticator. And in this case, a security key like a YubiKey would have the private key where a public key would be given out to the, the company and be and a unique uh, public key would, they would store and manage. But the private key uh, that is involved is no longer in the hands of the enterprise and thus provides a level of security that they don't have to worry about as much. Obviously they still gotta manage all the pieces and make sure that the public key is uh, properly secured but if it's if it's lost or stolen, then it's it doesn't provide any real value to the attackers because they don't have a private key. One thing that is important is for authentication is authentic or uh, is really validating and ensuring that you know the endpoints that you're doing your endpoint management. And on computers, uh, there's a number of ways to do that with monitoring and endpoint protection and device health, as well as some level of attestation. Uh, same with uh, the mobile devices, there's MDM solutions that help with that, but it's really important to make sure that the endpoints are managed. Now with a security key, there is no sort of additional software that can be added to it. And so the primary way that you can validate that a uh, YubiKey or a security key in general is coming from the right uh, partner that you've decided to go with is with attestation. So attestation is, is, a, is a key pair that is burned into the device you know, during manufacturing time. So the, the value for this from a zero trust perspective is that you know, high confidence that the device that is being used is a device that one you allow or a device that you can get information about to validate that the manufacturer. And so how this works uh, can be in very different ways from a security uh, key, since it is quite um, a single use device and used specifically for security, the mechanism is pretty straightforward uh, around this. And this is built into the, the WebAuthn and CTAP2 specs in the, in the way that it can be able to pull that information and be able to get information about the, the manufacturer and the uh, capabilities that it has. Mobile and uh, computers can be a little bit more complex, uh, mainly because they're more complex devices and they've been out for a number of years. So they may or may not have a strong, um, they might not have a, a uh, secure element on it that has attestation built into it. Uh, the way that you do it on computers is based on uh, TPM uh, standards. And the way you can do attestation primarily is through the FIDO. FIDO can has attestation built into the, uh, the specs itself. Uh, you can also do this with smart cards. Uh, it's not necessarily built into the PIV standards, but it's built into the TPM standards as well as security keys. They have it and new keys do the ability to do a PIV attestation capabilities. One thing that is also really important beyond ensuring you know what the endpoint is, is really ensuring well, who is using that endpoint. How can you, if you have strong authentication that is being able to do a cryptographic proof of authentication, how do you know who's using it? One of the primary ones is through identity proofing, especially in a remote world, is that, you know, you can't really just ensure these days that the person you're giving the UV key to, or the security key to, or even just the the authentication is easily recognizable because they might not be able to come into the office and show their birth certificates or their driver's license. So remote identity proofing solutions that are coming online are becoming really more uh, important in that space. And a lot of these work around uh, leveraging government documentations around with biometrics of their uh, liveliness text, tests and being able to validate that the face that's either on the phone or on the computer is also the matches the ones in the um, on the documentation that you get. Along with that is you know, we still want to ensure that 2FA is still in, involved in every authentication mechanisms you do. 
with FIDO and with smart cards as well is that that step can be pretty seamless to the end user. It's something you have, such as a YubiKey, and something that you know, such as a PIN, something you are as a fingerprint, and that provides that two-factor authentication ability to be able to uh, provide that two-factor authentication. And mainly in this scenario is when people might uh, lose their phone or their YubiKey is picked up by someone. It just doesn't get automatic uh, authentication. That way, it uh, provides that additional security that's needed. But for day-to-day -day use, it's a lot easier to be able to provide that capability than having to get a text or something else of that nature. Now that you have strong authentication in place, uh, it's really important to be able to integrate that with your identity management system and your access management system that uh, controls access throughout the, uh, the enterprise that is needed. The nice thing about that is there's a central control that can be in place and as well as analytics. There's a fair amount of uh, AI built into a number of those tools to be able to ensure that access is being provided at the right place at the right time. It also reduces uh, user friction so that they only have to authenticate uh, when necessary. But it is really important to ensure that they just don't get access to everything. Especially in a place where you're working from home, you know, your single sign-on experience might, you might want to limit that to just be able to authenticate and have that single sign-on experience to a certain set of applications at any given time. So these platforms provide the risk-based capabilities that you can have built in to be able to then uh, re-authenticate or do step-up authentication to uh, allow access to maybe more sensitive applications that are might be, uh, you might not want them to be accessed uh, from home or be able to access at a particular time. And, but those controls need to be in place. And, and that's why the integration of a strong authentication with an access man management platform is really important. So, and that's where you can really be able to uh, work with those, uh, those companies to be able to pull those together. Many of those are cloud-based uh, and are able to set up rather, rather quickly. So lastly, zero trust you know, needs, you know, back to really needs to rely on strong authentication. Uh, and nowadays uh, with FIDO being rolled out, uh, strong authentication is being easier to be able to uh, be in the hands of individuals from consumers to uh, companies as well. Uh, and the given that FIDO can be implemented, like I said, on, on a security key, like a YubiKey or inside a mobile device or inside a PC, that provides a strong and easy to be able to authenticate from various different modalities, uh, making it easier and convenient for, for the end user. I think we're also, what we would recommend too, is that that strong authentication should be highly encouraged to be not just the uh, work world, but also the personal world. The, being able to uh, provide that strong authentication to where um, it can be used for their personal device the personal access is really important, especially from working from home. Uh, it's a challenge to be able to lock down uh, PCs for just work activity uh, and devices for the most part are being used for, for everything. And being able to have that strong authentication across multiple or wherever the, the employee works and plays is really important because that will provide a you know, at the end of the day, stronger uh, uh, security is going to have. And to that point, it's, there's zero trust, right? So it's, you assume that they are being able to do things on that uh, laptop or those phones that are not always work. But being able to monitor that and have strong auth is a very helpful to be able to provide that um, security that you need. The, other thing, the last thing is that as you are working on a zero trust initiative, you know, go for the strongest authentication you can do at this time, given that it's really hard and rarely do you ever get a second chance to do that work. If, if you are in an environment that you can uh, continually get budget for 
doing additional security, that's great. But it's going to take a while to get back to doing uh, that part of your zero trust uh, infrastructure. So going into a FIDO-based authentication that provides that strong auth in the beginning will reap benefits over time. And with that, uh, that's basically the end of my presentation and appreciate any questions that you have. Thank you.